Sponsored by taking an interest at. I like giving back to the ones that nobody wants. Welcome back to See the Need, Finding the Solution. This is Phil McElveen, your host. 2012, where do we go from here? Mental illness, Phoenix, Arizona, metropolitan area. We're talking about a couple different parts of what's going on with mental illness. We're talking about health disparities as it relates to mental illness. We're talking about treating the whole person, the mind, the body, and the spirit. And we're also talking about integrated health solutions, things that are happening in our valley uh, from providers and major organizations that provide services here in the Valley. Uh, it's a privilege and an honor to welcome back and have an, uh, on our show the chairman and CEO of Your Neighborhood Healthcare Center, Mr. James Alai. How are you doing, James? Thanks, Bill. Nice to see you again. Uh, James, for the person, uh, like I usually say, that comes in from Cleveland or Chicago and is here on vacation and has no idea who you are, give us a little background of what you do and uh, where you guys come from. Uh, YNA2 was started back in 2007 as a community uh, health organization. We started developing our model in the community and working with various community service organizations to sort of expand the availability of health care through those organizations to the needy in our, in our first location. Uh, when we uh, opened our second location, we found that the, the same needs were, ne uh, were necessary in other parts of the valley. And at the same time, we found that there was a tremendous need for broadening our service um, spectrum. So we went from sort of a general medical practice, moving more into sort of the pediatric to geriatric realms, uh, then into um, pain management realms, and then now we've gotten uh, closely associated with the People of Color Network, and we've started a, um, an integrated model uh, of healthcare. Uh, again, it's that whole mind, body, and, and person, um, and spirit. Uh, philosophy. You know, we talked about the last show uh, with Tomas about the spirituality part and some of the how difficult over the years it's been to put in the spirituality part, whether it's by guidelines, whether it's by uh, being politically correct, or you know, it's always been uh, treating the the mind over here, the body over here, that type of psychological over here, and the spiritual side kind of took a, a back seat. And with that new integrated stuff, um, and I know a little bit about you, how does it feel to be able to start, you guys, your first 
uh, site was Roosevelt, correct? correct? So that's down in the middle of where the welfare needs to be. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I really love about w the things that are seen they need is based out of, uh, it's based out of actually a scripture in the Bible, which is Jeremiah 29, which one of the phrases in it is if you want welfare, to go be a part of it. And you guys started out in an area that is full of need uh, and now have been able to branch out, obviously, with your new uh, site over there in Osborne. And, but how, how exciting is it for you when you look back at where you started and now to where what's available and what you have the privilege to be a part of, to be able to mix those things? You know, it's almost surreal how far we've come in four years. We, we started as a small clinic in, in an underserved neighborhood. And the community and, and services have really stepped up and assisted us in developing our model. And in terms of the spirituality component, um, you know, it's, it's free-flowing in our clinic. I mean, it's comfortable with the patients and it's comfortable with the providers and the staff. Um, and those folks that choose not to want that, it's okay as well. And, but we don't get a lot of, a lot of negative uh, feedback as a result. In fact, quite the opposite. We get a lot of positive feedback because it's just not done. Most memorable moment for you when it comes to the spirituality that you can remember in your office that was kind of patient-led. Well, if, you, if you could put your finger on something that was memorable for you, uh, where a patient kind of led in and took advantage of that, is there anything that comes to mind to you? Yeah, the, uh, we had a, a woman, this was, way, we've had many, many, many experiences like that, but probably one of my first, because I was by myself, and probably the most memorable was a woman that came in, had been diagnosed with a certain form of cancer. And it was, it was not a good, it was a very aggressive form. And she said that uh, she needed some spiritual guidance in regards to what to do about it. Uh, she talked to her pastor and he, they, there, was, there was some advisement there. And so we talked to her about you know, where to seek out help for clear diagnosis and treatment, but that she was welcome to come in for visits and be prayed over. And oh, wow. it, was, it was not more than four or five months into it that this cancer, which was an aggressive form of cancer, was in remission. So for me, it was sort of a aha moment. I mean, you know, I believed in prayer, but then I saw it. And it was just, it, I was awestruck. Wow. It's, it's actually a very emotional time for me. And for me, uh, being involved with, with uh, James and also uh, YNHC or your neighborhood healthcare clinic, um, when we had a chance to spend some time there and go over the dialogue and go over the practice and uh, putting together the, the footage and the video of uh, the commercials, one thing that I'm very adamant about from our marketing end is making sure that things are real. And uh, you can see the patients high-fiving. Uh, you can see uh, the different stuff going on at the office. But it was a very, very easy-flowing office where it's not so uh, stuffy as what I'm used to the way I was raised to walk into a doctor's office and you know yeah it's kind of like that old theory of the pharmacist being way up here and and you're down here you know I always there was a wall it seemed like uh, where a doctor would come in it was he would be in a white coat and he'd leave where uh, your clinic is very uh, accessible where people talk and, and they they care and they laugh and they smile and uh, some of them even cry you know at the same time this is the company through the last 2012 stories of healing and hope that also stepped up to the plate and offered free health care uh, to people in Phoenix metropolitan area uh, during the holiday season uh, that uh, either did not have insurance or couldn't afford that health care as well too. So kudos to you guys being out in the community. Comprehensive care to low income and underserved populations. Let's talk about that. Uh, comprehensive is, as we said before, we, we started out as kind of a basic uh, general clinic model, moved more into the fringes of pediatrics and, and geriatrics. So we were covering the gamut, basically, as we term it in medicine, cradle to grave. So that, you know, when they're born up until they're ready to go to hospice or some other place to pass on, we take care of patients all the way through. Um, our, our providers are very comfortable and confident in those, and they're capable in those areas. And as we've progressed, we've had more and more provider types coming to us and asking us, how do we do that? And we, we do it by research and development and, and just staying abreast of the, the new kind of um, areas in medicine that are, are constantly changing. Um, so the comprehensive medicine in the medical part is something that we started out wanting to do and now we're doing it. We moved into pain management because there's a tremendous need in the community for quality pain management. Absolutely. Not just med management, but also understanding the psychological issues associated with chronic pain. So we work with those patients as well, both, again, with the mind, body, and spirit concept. And uh, now we've moved into the behavioral health. So we're, we're sort of knee deep. 
And that, that's only, that, that's two thirds of our model. We have another whole segment that we're in the process of developing that will provide comp full comprehensive medical care under one model. Not so different from the Mayo model. You know, uh, we already talked about as compassionate as, as your neighborhood healthcare centers is in giving back to in the community. And as you can see, um, I'm a big believer of starting in one point when you said, you know, four years later, and you look back at that, I remember what it was like for me six years ago. I was the guy that was walking that street in front of your clinic. So I, I, I know what that feels like to get that, that spiritual awakening as where you're able to go, wow, it really is amazing and it really does work. Um, and what a privilege it is to be able to experience. Not everybody gets a chance to experience that either and to be able to use that uh, back into the community. So uh, really, really, uh, not kudos in a sense, but I'm, I'm really grateful that you're taking that experience and, and really focusing on it and giving it back, uh, aligning yourselves with people uh, like POCN and other organizations as well too. Um, we mentioned about their caring staff, the caring patients. You'll see it in their commercial coming up on break as well. Um, what I really like to do is, you know, your neighborhood healthcare center has got some stuff that's going to be coming up here. Uh, they're going to be around doing some different things. We'll leave it as a surprise. We'll be uh, letting you guys know what they are up on the show uh, before we get involved in all the, the specific details of all that. But they now have two clinics, uh, one, in, one over on Roosevelt, one off of Osborne, and um, their information will be on the screen. They'll also be accessible uh, on going on to aztv.com as well as going to seeingtheneedmarketing.org where you could uh, take advantage of some of the services that they provide from a very caring staff and a very caring uh, uh, physician's assistant and doctor staff as well too. So with that, I'd like to say thanks to uh, Mr. James Alai. He will be back with more information on your neighborhood health care center. My name is Phil McElveen, and we'll be back in a minute. Check out the commercial for these guys. They rock. YNHC, one of the Valley's most caring medical practices, founded on the principles of community service through healthcare. Utilizing comprehensive family medicine through community partnerships, education, and collaboration with local businesses. Dedicated to the needs of their patients through integrated healthcare the way it should be. That's why we're your neighborhood healthcare center. Multiple payment options are available, and for more information, call 602-889-9401. There's no stigma or discrimination against the heart, the liver, the kidney, even the gallbladder. Doesn't even have a job. Yesterday, depression was kept in the dark. And bipolar disorder was your best friend's mother's problem. But the tide is turning. We're stopping the stigma. We're coming out. Our goal is to make the discussion of mental dis-ease cool and trendy. No kidding? Me too. No kidding. Me too. No kidding. Me too. It's time we gave the all-American brain some peace of mind. Living with mental illness is a challenge, but it makes me stronger. Some would say I'm crazy. I would say I'm enlightened. Some would say I have a disability. I would say I have special abilities. Some would say I'm far from ordinary, but I'd say I'm extraordinary. One in four adults are affected by a mental illness. To learn more, visit oneinfour.info. We are 100% committed to preventing suicide. We represent 100%. We represent 100%. We represent 100%. We represent 100%. I'm Jeremiah. I work at Chrissy Ski and Board in Lakeside, Arizona. These are they're very convenient, small cars. They get the job done. Well, I always go skiing, but I didn't have a, something like this. Convenience, uh, speed. You have your kids in the back, right? But you're still able to carry your skis, carry your board, whatever you want. 
while still having your kids in back. Get it, it gets the job done. Hi, welcome to Seeing the Need, Finding the Solution. This is Phil McElveen, welcome back. Uh, always a pleasure to uh, talk with uh, James. Uh, we have a couple special guests today, and uh, I'd like to introduce, um, first I want to introduce uh, Kurt. Kurt, you're from Shadow Mountain, is it Shadow Mountain Mechanics Auto? What's the yeah. correct? Shadow Mountain Auto Service. Shadow Mountain Auto mm -hmm. Service, and I'm gonna let you introduce your friend. I guess you've known Ann for a while. Yeah, Annie Harrop. Annie Harrop. Annie, uh, what company or is the name of your company? America's number one automotive resources. Okay. I met Annie uh, a couple months ago, I think it was. Yes. Okay. And this little lady walks into our office, and I think I was uh, on the first or second meeting, but I was over at the station and was running really late. And uh, she waited, and 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 she waited with a smile on her face. And um, she had the most neatest uh, type of thing that was going on. And I'm going to let Annie, uh, for the person that doesn't know you, give a little hi quick history about you. And then let us know how you came to the point of the company in which you now run. And then we'll go into Kurt a little bit. Well, many, many years ago, my daughter totaled my car. And one way or another, I ended up in the automotive industry. And once I understood everything about the automotive industry, uh, for me, it was about how do I make positive changes on behalf of my clients. And they didn't just need uh, help with acquiring vehicles, they also needed help with the aftermarket. And so we expanded into that. And then when the economy tanked, a lot of the smaller companies were going out of business, not because they weren't great business owners, not because they didn't have a great product or service, just because the average community um, person didn't know how to get a hold of them. I mean, I ask people all the time, if your car was to break down in front of a mechanic shop, would you go in and ask for help or would you call a tow truck company to take it somewhere else? That person may be the best mechanic in the whole state. We would never know. And so what I realized was the, what was missing was credibility, accountability, and visibility. I mean, how many micro and small business owners have the cash flow to do commercials? or be on TV shows, right. or the marketing strategy that goes with it. So we collaborated and formed a company where we can all do it on a supply chain foundation. And a supply chain foundation means basically a, a group of, of local businesses or micro businesses that provide services and or uh, products Product. um, that are the best and the best maybe of, in your eyes and your research and your experience. And how does that work for uh, for one of us, say I'm I'm at home, I'm looking for a great mechanic, besides the one sitting next to you, um, but say I'm looking for a great mechanic and I'm also looking for somebody that can help me, I'm a micro business, and, and I, I, one of my character defects is I just don't like dealing with book work. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about that a little bit. Well, the, the one way you can get to a great mechanic is you have to call us, which is what in the past they've done, or you can go to the website now and we've got them listed under vendors. But I want people to understand, we just didn't pick the um, shops. We were doing business with the people we'd been, done business with, and then we asked them to refer the people they're doing business with. But mm. in the meantime, what happened was, we found out that if I went to Kurt and said, I can give you 100 new clients a month, that just sent him into a tailspin, not him personally, but because they didn't have the infrastructure and they didn't have the people that to help them grow on a positive, and that we would create a negative. So then we created the second step of the foundation, which is business solutions team. Now we can go in and help them with anything they need, and but it's not costly, and they can do it as need basis. And you're talking about it's not costly. You're referring to the businesses that are associated with, with the company that you're talking Correct. about. Correct. We've gone in and negotiated all the contracts 
so that now if you need a copy, let's say, you get the same um, cost as if you were one of the bigger companies. And you don't have to buy the big products and you don't have to buy as many. But 60% of all businesses in this country are micro and small business owners. Mm -hmm. But those 60% pay more for the privilege for the big boys to get it for less because nobody's created this kind of foundation. And one of the economic summits that I went to this year, uh, one of the points that Pollock talked about was the emerging markets and talked about the micro and small businesses aspect of, of things. Um, to give a little idea for those of you who don't know about seeing the need marketing, uh, seeing the need basically is based off of taking local businesses that's based out of the Bible, which is Jeremiah 29, which is, means if you're going to be in Phoenix, you might as well bless it. Um, but it's, you know, I talked about it before in another show, but, you know, about 80 to 90 percent of charitable giving is done by individuals, not companies. Um, if businesses aren't flourishing and the bigger percentage are micro and small, small businesses, especially in today's economy, where uh, a lot of people have been forced to leave what they know or what they're used to, shall I say, and uh, get creative, uh, be able to support their families, their kids, their communities. Um, and with that, what we wanted to do is take, uh, in kind of in a reverse mode of, of what Annie does, but take these larger corporations that are used to spending a lot of money in advertising, um, taking very specific causes in our uh, community that need to be met, um, putting together campaigns, and allowing the for-profit world to mix with the non-profit world. And everybody gets the same exposure um, to try to grow as a community um, with the same type of philosophy there. How's it been working for you so far? It's been working great. We've held some events. Of course, we also need visibility, credibility. We have the accountability. Um, and it's, it takes a long time because you're trying to do it different. Than, we're not just taking everybody on. Mm -hmm. So, And then, of course, we had to stop and step back and recreate some things. And that's really hard to do. And people don't always understand the process of what it means to create an organization from scratch, especially when you don't have all the funding that you need as well. Over here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Can totally relate. That's why we have your friend Al on our uh, our staff as well, too. Um, you bring a friend with you, Mr. Uh, Kurt Morgan, is it correct? That's right. Shadow Mountain Automotive Services. Kurt, welcome. Uh, first time on the show? Yes, sir. First time on TV? Mm -hmm. See, yeah. it's nothing new, huh? Just yeah. sitting here talking shop. Sure. How long, uh, give us a little background for the uh, people who don't know who Shadow Mountain Auto Services is. And I've been in the automotive business for more than 25 years. I guess now more than like 27 or 28 years is dating me, but um, in, in a relatively <laughs> new business, I started the worst economy in our lifetime about four years ago so oh, wow. um, my business is you know I got quoted in the newspaper here a few weeks ago and, and I, I used the term it's been a bloodbath but it, it I mean it kind of is it's an embarrassing term but um, you know uh, it's just been uh, terrible and and I've been so fortunate I mean I'm really truly fortunate and lucky um, because my business has just been uh, growing and and um, I'm very interested in the whole giving back, like you're talking about, not just the community, but I'm, I'm passionate about my business. I teach at Glendale Community College, and I'm involved in just about everything that furthers the image of the automotive business. Part of the reason that I'm involved with Annie and, and part of what she does is improve the image of everybody that's involved because of that accountability. And I'm really, really um, fortunate to be a part of that and glad to be a part of that because it furthers the, you know, it, you, you, when you're fortunate, you want to give back, you do the things that we've done. I've been involved in some stuff, the packages from home for the troops and, and stuff. But um, but in this business, there's very little that you can do. There's not charity for, for businesses. We're businesses. But um, as far as improving the image, I believe there's more good, honest guys out there than not, and the ones who aren't give everybody a bad name and, and drag things down. So well, Not only that, you touched on the point, and, and both of you did, it's, it's very hard to uh, to grow a business in advertising wise if uh, you don't have the capital to do so. You started out four years ago in a market mm -hmm. that uh, uh, you know, it's not always the easiest market to, to do something with that in, but you've been in the business with a long time, so mm -hmm. with the heart and the experience comes a, mm -hmm. becomes a, a dedication aspect, which is, which is blessed. One thing that we talked about in, in our very first meeting, me and Annie, uh, was t taking, uh, we have a school for kids in the summer, a uh, graphics design school for free for adoptive, uh, foster, homeless kids, stuff like that. But was trying to figure out a way how to mix in the automotive side of it, maybe put together something uh, for kids uh, that are getting ready to enter into that adult life, uh, meaning over the age of, of 18, uh, but giving them a skill set, because let me tell you, some talented kids out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we put uh, kids anywhere from the age of, I think it was five or six, all the way to 17 in a uh, three-month-long course, and amazing what they could do. 
just absolutely amazing. Uh, they actually even came out at the end and produced a show. So uh, the idea of mixing that in with uh, the campaign aspect too of the mental illness uh, it will be interesting to see how that plays out and seeing if we can uh, do that as well. I got a call yesterday to do the same thing with the cooking for kids, for veterans, and their wounded warrior dads. So uh, what I love about cause marketing is, is it gives the uh, people that are, the way I put it is this, it gives the local businesses that really deserve that awareness, that visibility that Annie talked about, it gives them exactly what the other people get. Um, not that they're any different or any better, but you know, there are some beautiful companies and there are sponsors, every single one of them, um, and collaborators that have uh, spend money on, on advertisement and are very large. Uh, it's, it's a privilege to be able to pass that on and uh, be creative with the small business owner to see how they can continue to grow, continue to uh, offer an employment to people in our valley, increase their business so they can feed their family um, and get more exposure. Um, Kurt, I always ask everybody this question and uh, we got uh, a couple minutes, so uh, actually about a minute to, to kind of answer this. Defining moment which causes you as a person uh, to give back, if there is. The simplest, it's the simplest way you can say. Well, I, gosh, that's tough. I don't, there's, there isn't a moment, but it's somewhere there was the epiphany, somewhere along, I guess, when we started kind of getting into, the skill set of running a business is different than working on cars. I worked on cars for 25 years and then started running a business and it's a whole different deal. And it's at the point that you realize that you're, you're not fixing cars, you're fixing people. And the little neighborhood that I am is just a constant, you know, stream of referrals and the same people over and over. And you start to care about them. You, you know, you laugh with them, you cry with them. You, they come in just to sit down in our office and say hello and, and shoot the breeze with you. And it's somewhere in there the epiphany came that that we're serving people, and it's beyond just a profit-driven awesome. thing. Annie, real quick, if you could say one thing to the people out that are viewing this right now uh, about what's available to them, what would it be? Real quick. Help, support, trust, and knowing that um, they'll never be sold anything. That it's more a education process as they need it. Okay. And his website's free. There's a lot of information on there. Go ahead and look on the screen. Um, you can go to also shadowmountainauto.com as well. 602-482-1700. Information will be up on the screen as well. I want to thank you both, Kurt, and thank you, Annie, as well. Annie will be back here probably with some more great information on different services for local businesses. Uh, they saw the need. Um, they found a solution. We're going after mental illness and trying to change some things. See you next Sunday.